My name is Andy Skinner. Um, with me is Wesley Jones. We w both work on the uh, Living Atlas content team, and we work at least part of our time on building both the old cached base maps and now the vector tile base maps. And uh, that, of course, is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and I wanted to start by just throwing up uh, what we consider a base map to be. So in terms of when we're working, this is what we think about, a map that's designed to provide a foundation uh, for one or more online maps. And um, the more is an important part of that as well. Um, the map sits in the background. It provides a reference, reference information relative to your story. Uh, and it supports, but it doesn't compete with what you're doing. Now, our different base maps perform different roles, but when we're talking about base maps, that's basically the way that we sort of think. So what are vector tile base maps? Well, they're maps, as I say here, cached and delivered as vector tiles in PBF format. I am no expert on this. Um, I believe PBF is protocol buffer binary format, and some of you may know what that means. I have no idea. I just play with the things. Um, they're great for us because the production time for these is a fraction of what it was for cached services, and the size of them is a fraction of uh, what they were for our cached services. Our cached services could be terabytes of information, and we would... Um, uh, you know, we could update them probably only at the most, what, twice a year, Wes? Mm -hmm. uh, once or twice a year was about the most we could hope to update them. Um, the current maps are coming in at about 20 gig. Yeah, right around there. The whole world at all scales, the vector tile maps, is coming in at 20 gigabytes, and we can run the whole thing in, I think it's about 24 hours, isn't that? Yeah, a little less even. Yeah. So for us, it makes a huge difference. It means that we can now update uh, at least once a month, and I think we're probably aiming for once every two weeks in terms of, you know, particularly in terms of um, update information with data as it comes into us. It's great for you because it's rendered client side. We publish this uh, base once. The vector tile package is published once, and then all of our base maps are derived from that one package. Um, it means that we can work a lot more fluently, a lot more effectively, but it also means that you can get in and customize this information after the fact, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, so the styling is controlled by a resources folder. Um, and Wes is going to go into this a little bit more detail. Uh, but this is basically, this is for one of our uh, sample base maps, the colored pencil map. The resources folder you see has fonts. So we're establishing fonts within this folder. We're establishing sprites, which we'll talk about more, which are for symbolization. And at the bottom, we've got the style file, which is a root.json, which controls the look of most aspects of the map. And um, this comes as part of a package. This is supplied with the vector tiles. So this is the starting point for everything that is done from there on. Ezra's vector tile base maps, uh, they're based on the open map box spec but with our own implementation of it. So if you're familiar with Mapbox, then you've probably got a head start on working on this stuff. But don't expect it to be the same, because we have taken it off in a few different directions. The maps and data are prepared and built in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, you can't work on it in desktop, unfortunately. It has to be Pro. Um, and then the extent to which you complete the map in Pro is up to you. You can actually finish the whole map off if you like, and then we'll be showing you how you, uh, you publish it from there, and then you serve it and it's ready to go. 
Um, but you can also try and sort of think of it as you're building a base map, which is, uh, you know, you can build more than one map off it when it gets out there. So that's part of the consideration as you're going into building this. Um, most current web browsers will handle it. We normally work in Chrome, so we know that it operates well with Chrome, but uh, I don't think we've come under an, on major in, uh, problems with any of the others, have we? Uh, we're also making it available in some desktop and mobile apps. We're increasing the number of all the, uh, this all the time. I'm just going to leave that up for a few seconds. I won't actually go through each of them um, in turn. One of the nice things when you get it into an app, uh, in most of them anyway, is that the text is rotatable. So it will uh, realign itself as you rotate the map. Our vector tile base maps, we provide a core set of pre-prepared map styles, all built from that one vector tile service. Some of them are like the existing Esri base maps that you've been using for years. There are one or two exceptions. The National Geographic one isn't in there yet. Um, others are new. We've sort of been able to take the opportunity to play with a few others. And at that, I'm going to hand over to Wes to uh, talk about where those are. Thank you, Andy. So I'm going to talk about in this section where some of the things are like the documentation, where you can find some of our maps, and <coughs> uh, where you can find the editors. Um, we'll go into the documentation first. So I've broken it down into four kind of areas that if you're going to be doing any editing of the JSON or uh, you're just interested in this stuff, this is really a good place to start the documentation. And I go, I'll go into each one of these. So the blogs. Even if you don't follow the blogs on a consistent basis, um, if you go to the tag vector base maps, that's a great resource to get you to see what's up to date with our base maps. So let's head over there. And you can see the tag vector base maps. We do things in here like tell you what's new. And we try and do this each month. Uh, because it was just before the UC, you can see we actually had two updates for June, what was going on. Uh, we also showcase other styles that we've introduced. So here's one that I actually had put together. I formatted it incorrectly, but maybe I, I liked my uh, draft kind of looking kind of big like that. Um, here's another one where Andy's talked about a human geography version he did, and then you can see the May updates and so forth. So it's a great resource to keep up to date with what's going on. And again, you don't have to follow the blogs, just go to that vector uh, tag, vector base map tag. Now, if you're really wanting to get into the JSON and edit some of this stuff yourself, this reference document is almost a vital resource. I mean, you don't have to use it, but I highly recommend using it. And we're going to be talking about it throughout the session because it is very important. It's a moderately living document. Uh, we update this whenever we have updates. And it's a PDF, and so if you downloaded this a couple months ago, just check back every couple months to see if there's a new version of this. Some things might have been tweaked, a few scales might have been changed, for example. So uh, I'll even open it up, but it, inside of it, it tells you what the layers are, uh, it goes through what scales those items are cooked into, the tiles out, because just because the data is in there doesn't mean it's available at all scales, so it tells you the specifics of that. Um, one of the interesting things is it's got the section on disputed boundaries. This is a really nice function where I think we've identified approximately 90 disputed boundaries and you can turn those on and off depending on your view. So for example, India has a specific view of their country. They can turn off the competing Chinese and Pakistani views and vice versa, the countries can do the same. And so this identifies what piece of code you need to change in the query. Uh, tells you about the fonts, and we'll get into that. But it, it's 28 pages, and you can see here I just zoomed around in spot. This tells you building airports. These are the scales that those are available at. So it really is an important resource. And even at the end of it, it goes through uh, pretty much this presentation, not the whole presentation, but how to make a copy of these vector maps. So it's, it's a vital resource. The help, the help is really good. and 
I've got these three links here. I'm only going to look at the first one, author map for vector tile creation. I highly recommend going to that one as well. It does a really good job of breaking down the vector tile packages, which th these vector tiles essentially are. And uh, you can see it even talks about like making the map efficient. It's a great resource. The link to the other things at the end, there's author multi-skill map, which is not necessarily the vector tiles, but um, it covers this topic a little bit and vector, create vector tile package and create vector tile index. So if you're in the help, those are the ones you want to go to. The last one is the Mapbox um, style spec. Like we said, we are using that open style spec with our own implementation. So it's a good resource to go to if you're doing, oh, sorry, if you're doing, or if you don't understand a piece of the code, I guess I'll say. Uh, it, like say, let's, let's go down to like a random spot. You could add something into the code called icon opacity. I mean, that one might be straightforward, but maybe it's not, or you might see something within the JSON that doesn't make sense. This will tell you how to write that in the code and even what units to use. So if you're doing some really advanced editing, this is a really good resource to go to as well. Like, you know, some of them make sense. There's some that like icon translate. I would have to go to here to see what that is, for example. So that's a really important resource as well. If you go to there and check these out or do it while you're doing the JSON editing, you're going to be way ahead of someone who hasn't. So I highly recommend going to these. Okay, let's jump over to the maps. We've got a core set of maps, a core set of base maps. Uh, we've got, uh, let's say, nine right now. You can find those in a variety of ways. One of the best ways to find those is to go, um, well, not one of the best. Yeah, I guess it is one of the best ways. If you are owner of an organization, you can change the default now to show the vector base maps. So in that base map gallery, you'll have the vector base maps instead of the raster equivalents. So that's, I guess, one of the easiest ways. Uh, the living atlas is also a good way. We can go to that site real quick just to show you, um, you know, how one of the many ways you can find it. Down in the base maps tab, if you click base maps, you want to search for the Esri maps. And within here, you're going to find that often because these maps get updated so quickly, they're going to be the first several in this entry. Um, you can also search for uh, vector within there, I believe. And that will, uh, see, these are the, the uh, vector maps now. So just type the word vector in there, and it'll bump those ones to the top. So that's one nice way to search for these maps. Um, like I said, there's many ways to search for them. Um, I've made a couple short URLs here. And these, I, I like uh, going to these ones. This is just the group that hoses, uh, hoses, hosts these maps. So s3url.com vector maps group. Uh, we'll go to that one, and uh, it's a nice one because it just has the nine core maps in it, but it has them, you see when I, there's, there's 24 entries, and it's because a lot of these maps are split into different pieces. So you can access just, for example, the reference portion of the canvas maps here, or the base map um, portion of it. And so this is a really quick way to find these maps, and you can add them to the web map like normal through here. The other way is if you go in, oh, I won't talk about the other, I'll show you another group that I find quite interesting, is the sample vector tiles group. This is a sample group where we've done a lot of customization ourselves on our team, and it gives you access to a variety of completed maps. I'll show you this one um, a little bit later, but it's got some here showing some simple examples like autumn, and so some seasonal customizations. There's a black and white uh, colored pencil, there's another few variations of the canvas maps, and there's, there's three pages of this one. Uh, I'll just show you, go through the other pages really quickly. Human geography, those are some that Andy put together. Um, some Halloween one. So it's a great place to go to just to see some of the things that we've done. And you can start from these ones too. If you saw a style in here that you really liked, you could start from one of these if you wanted to do some editing. Uh, just check the rest and go to the last page and on the third page, Modern Antiques, quite a nice one. It uses a hill shade, which most of our samples don't, so that's a good one to go to. Pokemon Go, the former, the creator of it, sitting in the audience today, so that's a nice one. And the ones at the bottom here, they just, just tell you about how to change some of the disputed boundaries. So, the next thing I want to talk about are the editors. And 
You can edit these maps in a variety of ways. If you want to edit the JSON, these two Andy's going to show you, uh, the vector based on style editor and the vector style JSON editor, um, two of many ways. If you don't want to use one of these editors, all you need is a JSON editor. We happen to like Adobe Brackets. You can use whatever you like. Uh, that one just works well for us. And it's definitely worth mentioning that ArcGIS Pro is one of the editors and in the future become more and more of an editor. Um, but if you want to do any vector tile package creation, you're definitely going to go through Pro to do that. So that covers kind of the general of how you find a lot of this stuff. I'm going to pass it back to Andy and we're going to start talking about some of the customization. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize for my cough. Um, these mics are a little hot. Um, okay, so I'm going to look at um, making some of the basic changes to the maps uh, that we have. That is that you're going to be building from an existing vector tile base map. You're going to be working within that JSON to change the code to uh, get a different effect. Most likely it's one of our base maps, but it doesn't have to be. It could equally be something that you've created yourself. I'm just going to reinforce what uh, Wes said about this reference document. The structure of our maps is complex and it's getting more complex as we add more and more uh, detail to it. And this document, I'm not going to scroll through it, but this document is pretty much essential if you want to make major changes to what we do. You need to go through this. It's going to give you our uh, layer names. It's going to tell you the scales at which we build the data because what you build into Pro does define what can be used in the final map. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's um, a starting point. I'm just going to go across very quickly to, uh, this is a map I've signed in I'm into my organization. Um, I've put together, I've started a map, and if I, I'm wanting to start building my own version of an existing vector tile base map, first thing is to do is to choose the base map. This is another way of doing it, is go in through the ad, go to Browse Living Atlas Layers. You've got the chance to say Show Esri Layers Only. Um, and then you can go down to Esri Base Maps. And it's taking its time, but that will give you about uh, half a dozen um, pages of our base map, similar, it's sort of getting to the same ones that uh, we showed you in that group. Not quite sure why we're not seeing those coming up, but... You're in airplane mode. Uh, no, I, actually I shouldn't be. I think it, it's saying that, but let me just see if this is coming up. Um, let me just check that. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm connected. Um, so I'm going to work with the light gray canvas because it's uh, you know one of the simplest ones to work with and to start from because it's a neutral palette so you can pretty well go wherever you want on this. So I am going to first of all make a copy of that layer. I'm then going to save the layer. Now I'm not going to go to the save at the top which is saving the web map that this is in. I'm going to go in the window here down to save layer now, please, when you reach this stage, change the name of the file. Uh, any of you have tried to work through our gallery and you put in light gray canvas and you get a million different versions that people have put up out there, sometimes just playing and trying to get round to our original source one can be a bit of a pain to say the least. So just change the name. Um, I've been messing around with a number of different versions on this, so I'm on number 13 of this. LGCM, and then uh, you'll need to make sure you've got a summary entry there and you've got some tags in there and create item and if I go back to my content page I should see that item in there. There it is, LGCM 13. Let me go back to my um, working map. I need to add that in here now. So I'll go for search for layers. Uh, I'll just take that off unless it's very specific. I'll go to my content and I will just search for LGCM. 
and there it is. So I can add that to my map. And for what it's worth, I can get rid of the older versions now. Um, you know, they're not relevant to what I'm doing. So I'm just keeping my version in there. Um, one of the things I need to do with this is download the style. So I'm going to go to show item details and I'm going to hit download style and that's dropped it into my downloads folder um, and that can then be opened up into, this is brackets, which is the uh, editor that we use and you see you get this horrendous sort of block of text which um, some of you may be familiar with working with code, you may be very happy with it. I'm very old school, uh, so uh, I always said I wouldn't go near text, but sort of a year on from this, I'm working with it very happily now, so I encourage you to um, play with it. What I'm going to do with this, we've got another tool that we use. I'm going to just cut that from the document. I'm going to go to an, um, an online app called JSON Lint which is one that we use. It's actually meant for when you're building a JSON, it's a chance to uh, validate it and make sure that you've done everything correctly. And if you've made an error, it's going to throw up exactly what error you've made. I'm going to copy that text in there and then hit validate. And the first thing it does is uh, put that into a much more friendly format so that I can now go back to brackets and put it in and now you can see that it's something that it's still complicated but it's something that's a bit easier to sort of fight your way through. Now this as I said is the light grey canvas map, it's one of our simplest base maps. We've got about five and a half thousand lines of code in there so there's a lot to work through. There's a, that's why this reference document is so important, you need to understand what's going on in here. Now, I'm not going to actually make edits in here because it gets a little bit long-winded. But basically what you're doing is you're changing whatever feature you want to change, uh, color say. Um, you're saving your change. And then you're going back to your document. Uh, let's find that details. And I'm going to update and that's going to allow me to find that style file, uh, choose the file, update the style file, and then that change should be saved back into your, uh, the, the map layer that you've saved onto your drive. It's a bit fiddly, you've got to go backwards and forwards between these, but we have actually made a couple of uh, simple editors available to you, Wes referred to them before, um, they're still in beta, so things sort of tend to change on them, but um, you can, uh, I'll, I'll show you those. Actually, there's one other thing I just want to uh, mention before I go into that. Let me go back to my document. Um, you need to choose a base map which is probably closest to what you think the uh, final result that you're looking for is. So for example, when we did those seasonal maps, we were just changing colors on the light gray base map, so that was our starting point. The one complication are the sprites that we're talking about. The sprites are what create point symbols and some of these uh, textures. This is the sprite for the street map. So you can see, not unexpectedly, you've got a lot of street uh, road shields in there, but you've also got some city dots down there. There are a couple of transit symbols in there, and then we've got things like the swamp symbol. These are all what the sprites uh, create. If you're working on our base maps, the sprites cannot be changed. To change a sprite, you've got to be able to take it back into ArcGIS Pro, and Wes is going to be giving you a lot more detail on that. So you uh, need to make your decision on the starting boy, uh, point, both on the, the one that's closest to what you want to do, but also one 
that has got the right sprites for where you want to take the map. And it might be that if you're taking the map in a very distinct color that the ones that are in there don't suit, then you might have to look around for another one. It might involve a little bit of extra work for you, but it's safer than getting in and then finding that you've got this uh, sort of major clash. So let me go back online and I'm going to go into the first of the editors we've got. Um, this is the one we call the JSON editor. Um, and th this is a file I've already got open, but it's the light gray canvas. It's another version of the light gray canvas. So you can see that we've got the code on the left, uh, different um, count on the code this time because it's laid it out a little bit differently. The map on the right is a preview map. So this is not the final layer. Uh, this is just something that you can work in before you commit what you're doing to the uh, layer. So the first thing, oh yeah, let me just very quickly show you the other one. Um, I'm going to look into these in more detail. This is the uh, sort of GUI style uh, editor that we've got. This one is laying all of our layers out in alphabetical order. All of the colors are in swatches over here, so it's a little bit easier to follow. You can adjust the size of these once you know which map you're working off. This is listing all of the maps that are in my, the, the layer files that I have available in my account. Then you can sort of increase that a little bit so you can see a little bit more. This has also got a shortcut with this one. There's a copy Esri base map, which if you click on that, it will list our core base maps, just our core nine layers, but it will give you a starting point very quickly if you're not looking for one of the sample ones or an individual layer to work on, then that's uh, just a quicker way of getting at it. So I'm going to start by looking at changing color. Um, and I'll start in the JSON editor, in the uh, JSON editor, this is really easy. I'm just going to put something very simple in there. So, prepare to have your eyes hurt. We're working in hex colors here. Uh, now, in the brackets document, I think it, yeah, you can put RGB in the brackets document, can't you? And this one, I think you can only do hex. Let me apply that style. I told you I was going to hurt your eyes. Um, if you're not, if you've never worked with hex, if you're not comfortable with hex, there are converters available online that will convert the colors directly from RGB um, or you know HSV or whatever you're comfortable working in. Um, the other one I'm going to show you does have them there already. But um, so changing color relatively easy once you've found the right line to actually change it on. Um, if I go into the other one, let's change the land this time. These are in alphabetical order, so I can go down and find the land. There it is. I can click on the color selector, and there I can specify RGB or you know whichever version I want. Or I've got a picker there, so I can go in and let's choose something a little less painful this time. Um, and that's applied the color to the land. This one also does something else. It's got a find by color option, which means if I go in here, uh, I may have to just search for this, but one of these, this is it. Um, this is picking out all of the uh, layers that we have in here, which have our water symbol on. So it's picking all of the ones that have that color. This gives you an idea of why these maps are so complicated. You know, with water, I'm afraid you've got to try and hit all of these layers. This one allows you to do it in one go. So I've got all of those. I can put a color in there. Let's go for a sort of darkish blue. And now I can replace the color on all of those layers together. And there you see pretty quickly, we're getting a very different looking map. Um, let's look at, oh, well, let me first of all, let's get rid of those changes just to, uh, so this thing doesn't get too painful. 
There are undo buttons on both of these, so I can step back. Um, let me go down to, I think it's around line 900 I want. Uh, yeah, boundary line admin 01. I happen to know that that is the international boundaries that we're seeing at this scale. So if I change the color in there just to show what we're looking at, then we should see those. There we are, we've got those red boundaries coming out. Changing line widths. Uh, the line width, this is a line called line width. Um, quite often, well, you know, sometimes you'll go in there and as with the color, you will see a simple value. Think of it as either pixels or points. You know, you'll get a feel for how this works. Um, but uh, you, know, you sometimes see just that plain value and you can change it as it is. More often than not in our base map, you're going to see these stops. And what the stops are doing is defining the scale at different zoom levels. So at the moment, what we're saying is that the zoom one, which is pretty much where we are, it's the furthest out zoom, you're looking at this uh, 0.665. By the time we go into zoom 14, then we're up to nearly 10 points in width, and it's changing progressively between that. Um, it's quite a nice way to work. You sort of set these key points, and then it will adjust it automatically between the scales. Once you're in here, just to prove the point, I can go in, I'll change that and now we've got the thicker lines. So the actual change is easy to make. With all of these, the changes are easy. It's just finding the right place to make the change, which takes the time. Let me have a look in the other one. Um, let me go back to the style layers. Whoops. What's happened there? Let me reload that. Okay, I'm not sure which map I've picked up on this, but it's another light gray, so we'll just make the change in here. Um, so I know this is an alphabetical. That layer I was looking was boundary admin zero one. Um, where are I two? Admin zero one, there we are. If I click on the name of the layer, then I'm gonna get a subset of the JSON code so I can go in here. You've got to dig into them a little bit sometimes to find where you want to be. Here are my stops. Here's my layer. There's my 0.665 value. I'll change that. I'll make it a bit bigger this time just because we're on a small map. And, you know, I mean, obviously that's crazy, but that's, um, that's how you make the change in this editor. Okay, it's going to take me a few minutes just to set up a, another layer. Hopefully not a few minutes, but Wes is yeah, just going to so take I, over. I think a, a good thing that this is showing is there's a variety of ways that you can edit this stuff. You can use either one of them, or you can use a combination of both, or you can do some of the ones just in the JSON code. Just if you're going to want to make these styles, play with it, and you can see which one you feel more comfortable, comfortable in. And one of them does some aspects of it better. The, U, uh, the, the one that has more of the interface, the code maybe is a little bit more versatile because you can actually get into the code and add in that code detail really quickly. Um, we kind of use a combination of both at times. Um, sometimes we just stay within the JSON. But yeah, just play with it. And I, I would suggest starting with the canvas map. It is the simplest one. And if you want to do those mass changes, it is the easiest one to do those mass changes on. Okay, thanks, Wes. Um, yeah, it, it just, I needed to find where that uh, particular section is, and it does take a, as you, if you're following what I was doing there, it takes a little bit to sort of just find your way down into the code. We're on somewhere about line six and a half thousand. Um, so what I've done, I've picked out one of the layers that controls the country names, and I've just put them in a, a rather unfortunate color. Um, let me just change that to something that might be a little less painful. Yeah, that's a little better. 
And I'm just going to, uh, this, here are those stops again within the text size. I'm just going to enlarge that um, very quickly to, so we can see those names a bit more clearly. What I want to just go to now is talking about fonts. Um, up until this year, you had, if you're working with our base maps, you had uh, aerial, an aerial bold, and that was about it. Italic, I think, was in there as well. But uh, there wasn't a great deal you could do. This year, we made the effort to try and introduce a few different fonts for you to work with. Um, and these are the ones that we've included. Um, they are listed in that reference document. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, most of these are open source fonts. You can use them anywhere. Um, a few we've chosen for a reason. Arial Unicode, which isn't actually listed here, is one that's available that has a lot of additional characters for uh, unusual diacritics and a few non-Roman alphabets for people who need that for what they're doing. Um, Avenir Next is our brand font, so we included, it happens to be a very nice map font as well. Uh, Palatino Linotype was, has been used in our uh, topographic map for quite a few years, so that's in. The others, we were just looking to find a few sort of playful ones that would give you a few options if you wanted to do things differently. Um, page, I think it's 25 of the reference document, lists the full names of all of these fonts. You will need these names because to change the font, you have to put in the exact name as it's listed here to get the effect in the final map. If I go back to my session here, and you can see, uh, let me find out where we are with fonts, uh, text font, here we are. We're Arial Regular at the moment. I happen to know that Redressed Regular is the name of one of those fonts. So I can put in, and there it is, changed. So the actual, again, the actual changing, no problems at all. You've just got to sort of do your research going in. Quick look at it on the other one. Uh, again, now, um, what were we, admin uh, zero point large, weren't we? So click on here, go in and look for the, the fonts are in the layout section, go in, find the font, change the name again, and it will change on your map. With both of these, once you've got it where you want it to be, you can hit update item, and it will update the map. On the other one, I think it's a straight save, and it will update, not the map, the style file, ready for use within your map. Okay, with that, I will hand back to Wes. Uh, what are we three, aren't we? Yes, I am. Okay, so I put an animated GIF in there of one of the maps. I found that I can't actually talk while it's going. It, it distracts me too much, but actually, yeah, I'll leave her there for a second. It, uh, in this section, we're covering styling in Pro, so making vector tile packages. And why do you want to go the vector tile package route? I mean, there's a couple reasons for that. One, the main one is if you've got your own data and you want to make vector tiles, you're going to make a vector tile package. You can change the sprites in a vector tile package and you can change to whatever font you want in the vector tile package. Um, the last point there I've got is it's pro and JSON. You can just make this a pro store. You can push this vector tile package to online and be done with it. Um, or you can intercept it halfway and then get to that JSON, do all those edits that Andy was showing you. Um, and we do, that's mainly how we do things. We do a ton of the work in Pro, and then we get into the JSON, do a few more uh, tweaks to it, repackage it, and then push it back up. So this uh, Chillin's map example I've got here, this is one I'd put together, and it's just an example of a vector map. So you can do a lot with these vector maps. Um, it's a vector tile package. I did most of the editing in Pro, and then I just did a tiny bit in the JSON, repackaged it, and pushed it online. You can see it's, it's multi-scale, it's just you know, an example of a fun little thing you can do with the maps. If you wanted to do a fun little thing, it could be uh, complex or serious too, but they're really versatile. You can see I've got different fonts in there, um, a whole lot of different things. So I'm going to demo a few things. I'm going to stylize a map. 
I'm gonna show you how just to push it online and I'm gonna show you how to get to that JSON. So I'll show you both ways. So let's head over to Pro. I've got a pretty simple map here. It's my own data, so that's one of the reasons you're making a vector tile package. I'm gonna change some of the sprites and I'm gonna change some fonts. So I'm just gonna do a couple things to it. So in the oceans, if we wanna change the symbology, you'd go to the properties of that. And <clears throat> with sprites, you're making uh, picture fills. So if you collect the picture fill, um, I can look for a picture. And the one I chose, I got some pretty um, ornate ones. I've got this water one. You can apply that, you see it comes in. And I'm gonna apply it just to show you that it seems like nothing happens. The one little thing just to remember to do is just press the reset size button. And you do that, then it comes in at the size that you want it to come in at. And you can see I've got this sprite uh, coming in now. Now, the, the nice thing is, say you've got a sprite that's too big, you can actually resize it in here if you wanted. You could, uh, we could say, you know, 100 point, apply that. So you can change it so you're not stuck to the size that you made it at originally. You can adjust it here. So that's a nice little thing you can do to it. I'll just reset that for the purposes of this demonstration. Can add, do the same thing to the land. We'll go into the solid fill, change it to a picture fill. I'm just going to select this um, green scaly thing and reset the size and apply it. So you can see really quickly, you can really dramatically change the look of the map. And I think you'll find that beyond like colors and maybe some text and font sizes, you probably on average aren't gonna change a lot of this, the details in the map. So within the JSON, you probably aren't gonna go really deep into it. You can, but you probably aren't going to, or you don't really need to in a lot of cases. Now I'm gonna change the label. So we'll go to the labeling tab. I've got just a few little labels in there. Uh, turn it on. And you can see it's defaulted to, H to Homa. Uh, we could use whatever. Let's use uh, Rockwell today. And we'll increase the size so we can see it. And I'm just going to do one or two more things to it just to show you um, how that stuff gets carried over into the JSON. If you go to the label properties, when that tab turns up, okay. So you go to label properties in the symbology, we're gonna change the halo. And if you haven't used Pro too much, or even if you have, one of the really nice things is having transparencies in all the colors now. So you can, instead of getting that really hard white halo, you can get a quite a subtle one. So just change it to 50%. This is RGBA. And you do that, we'll make it, let's say make it two point, and we'll apply that. And it, and, uh, it's showing up okay on the screen, and you can see that you've got a nice subtle halo now. Okay, so that's all the styling I want to do to it. I'm going to I'm going to share this as a package to online. So you do that simply by going to the share tab, and what you want to do is go to this web layer button, and we're going to publish a web layer. Now you can name this whatever for the purpose of this. I think this is oh, I'm going to spell it's Thursday, and we're making a vector tile package. You're gonna need the summary and tags and things like that. I always recommend analyzing it first just to make sure everything's, um, there's no issues there. Because us the biggest issue usually is you've got the base map in there still. And so that will come flag. And so just get rid of the base map because you're not packaging that up as well. And we can publish that. So while this is publishing, depending on the internet connectivity, it'll take a few minutes. We're gonna go show you that other route where you can package up a vector tile package and I'll show you how you can get to the JSON side of it. So we're going to do a two-step process. The first thing we're going to do, if you search for a vector within the geoprocessing window, we're going to be using these two tools. The first one is an uh, intermediate step. Uh, you don't have to do this, but this is how we handle it. We're going to create a vector tile index. And all index is doing is cutting up that data into manageable size uh, pieces. Because if your data is really complex, um, it'll cut it up in smart ways so that it's optimized and it'll display better and quicker. The map, we'll go to the map, the output feature class. We are, it, this is just an index. Uh, you can see I made one before. We can call this index. That's fine, I don't have that there. I'll make the index. And we're gonna use the, uh, the normal tiling scheme. You can change the vertex count, just leave it as is for right now. This is if you're coming to issues with uh, maybe draw time, you can reduce that and then it'll make smaller um, pieces of that index. We'll run that, it'll be done in a second because this map's uh, very simple. 
And the next step after this is we're going to um, create the vector tile package. So you can see that we just made four squares here because the data is um, very simple. So we can turn that off and let's go to the vector tile package. Here, we're going to go to the map again. The output file, this is what you're naming the vector tile package. Um, for ease of naming, we'll call it that Thursday again. And here we're using index. You don't have to, like I said, you, you can go flat if you want. That just doesn't cut up the data into smart pieces. But the index, you know, I recommend doing. Um, you can change the scales and things like that. And so I'm using the index. Uh, we need some tags. And we can run that. And so what that's doing is it's just packaging up all the data, it's, it's cutting into the pieces that it needs to be cut into, and, and it's making it through the scales. And so, you know, it, you can see it's done already, so it, it's very quick. Now, over here, I've got the vector tile package. It's simply a zip file. And so this is what we would do at this point. We would just rename it zip, and then uh, we'd extract it. I don't need to for the purposes of the demonstration. And you go into it, and it'll just show you where you'd find that resources folder. So there's two folders here. Don't really further your purposes need to worry about this info one. Everything's in this P12 folder within this resources folder. You can see the tiles are over here, and that's basically the index. So in the resources folder, uh, we've got the fonts, and I'll select that. You can see there's the Rockwell. You can also see Tahoma's there. All that means is one of the other features uh, in that table of contents had Tom as the default. It, it's, it, you can delete it here. You can go back to Pro and change them to Rockwell there. You can just leave it. It's, it's just coming along for the ride. If you really wanted to optimize it, we, we strip out the fonts that we don't want. So we'll go back to the resources. The sprites, so I changed those two symbols. If you look at um, this guy here, it just shows you what the sprite file looks like. So they're packaged together. So. You know, nothing crazy here, but just wanted to show you. And if you go into the um, styles, this is where the root.json is. This is what Andy was editing. And so this is where you would find that piece of uh, information to edit yourself. And I'll do the same thing that he did. So if you're going to edit it, the one thing I want to say is um, make sure you run it through a validator at the end, because some of the apps are a little bit more lenient than others, but you really want to make sure it's valid before you um, push it back and repackage it online. So we're going to copy that. We'll put it into JSON lint, validate it, and we'll copy it, Oops. copy it back over, um, over here, and we'll paste it in. And you can see here in the oceans, it's really simple. They just have the oceans fill pattern. The land has a land fill pattern. You can see that information I did with the populated place. So I've got the Rockwell regular font there. Um, and down here, you can see that there's that hex value that I just talked about. But I didn't change it from hex here. And you can see it, it respects RGBA. So the transparency is contained within that. So it's just another way to look at it. And when you're done, you just would save everything and repackage it up and um, push that back to online. So that's um, the way that we handle. Mm -hmm. Question? No, so. Yeah, so that one that I'm dealing with right now, what this code? Well, so I was doing two things. So the, the first one, I'm saving to online. So that's kind of happening while I'm talking about this one. And this one, um, while I ran that vector tile package, I basically created the vector tile package. And all I'm talking about right now is styling it now. So all that work has been done. I'm just uh, changing the style slightly. Sure. Uh, yeah, just, just uh for the uh, streaming one, the oh. question was, what was the name of the JSON file that we were editing? Um, so within this this folder, you're going to get two folders. There's the Esri Info and the P12. You're, you're looking for the resources. And they're all, unfortunately, called root.json. So it's just this root.json right here. Yeah, root.json. So there's two of them, I think, that come along that you're looking for this one within the resources folder. Cool. Um, back to this guy. Hopefully it's shared. 
So it's been successful. So we'll go to online just to take a look at that one that I published online. Because a lot of the times you don't actually need to go to that intermediate step, especially if your map's simple. I mean, online does a pretty good job, uh, or Pro does a pretty good job of getting to that spot that you needed to get to. So I think I'm in the right account. Let me just refresh. And I think I called it Thursday. Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so we'll click that and we'll take a look at it online. And you can see it actually is a pretty quick process, which is nice. And you know, this is fantastic, especially if you've done a lot of raster stuff in the past and how long that took. This is just astronomically quicker. And so let's take a look. Hopefully everything looks all right, but it should look almost exactly the same, if not exactly the same as the one that I did in Pro. It just takes a second to draw in here. And you can see it here. So I think that's what it looked like. Um, and if something didn't look like what you want to, that's one of the reasons why you'd maybe potentially go into that JSON code and just do a couple of tweaks. But you can see that it's a, it's a multi-skill map. Um, I actually cached this through all our skills that we support the vector at, which is almost all of them except down, I think it goes down to 1K at this point, and we're increasing that actually pretty soon. Um, but yeah, so you can go either route. Just wanted to show you really quickly both routes to take. Um, and that's a quick demo of, you know, um, working with vector tile packages. There's a lot of things we didn't cover in this session, um, but that are quite interesting still. And I, I think there might be one or two sessions left on this. And, but we have language support on these maps, and we're going to be having much more language support. The first language coming out is Spanish. That's coming out shortly after the UC. Not for all the features, but for a lot of them, um, especially the small scale features. Uh, talked about the disputed boundaries a little bit, but that is actually quite nice. And the thing about all these things is they're all supported within that one set of tiles. So it's not like you have to deal with another set of tiles. It's, everything's in that set of tiles. Uh, rotation, that's a really nice thing that um, we didn't show here, but in apps you can turn these maps around really nicely and the labels stay horizontally. Um, projections, projection support now, which is fantastic. And I like talking about this last thing just a little bit, the raster component. So often we're, we're talking about vector base maps, but it's not like it's vector or raster. If it makes sense to have something as the raster, like the heel shader image, you, you can combine it with the vector, and that's what we do. So it's not one or the other. It's just, well, let's use the best thing for whatever that thing is at this point now. And are you going to sum up, or do you want me to? Uh, yeah, I'll sum up. And uh, we're also we're running a little bit ahead of time, so I'll take the opportunity to maybe just quickly go through one or two of the other things that you can change in here. This is a little bit sort of random, but uh, I, hopefully you can read that uh, code okay. Uh, if we look into this layer here, the sort of thing we have, we've got line opacity in there. You can actually set this within the JSON code and work it so that you can add transparency to what you're doing. Um, we have within this one, we have a min zoom uh, instruction that controls the layers of which this feature is going to draw. So that's saying at min zoom of nine, that means it will, it will start drawing at layer nine, or I think it's sometimes 10, isn't it? It's sort of a little bit vague as to how it works, but, and there's also a max zoom, which works in the other the direction. So the max zoom will control the point at which um, it stops drawing as you zoom in. Um, we talked about, uh, yeah, just looking down through this. Here we've moved across into some of the text. So you can see we've got text letter spacing, we've got text padding, which gives you a little bit of space around labeling, doing a little bit of the sort of the maplex type functions. Um, Anchor, center, you know, you've got, that's the, your justification, left, right, um, whatever. Um, we've got an icon in here, so that's establishing what the sprite name is. Um, and then the text field, obviously, it speaks for itself. And again, you've got control of a text size, and uh, you can control the width as well. So there's a lot of flexibility in there. There's a lot that you can do. Um, it's a case of just learning how to control all of these uh, different aspects of it and uh, getting up with the uh, best result you can. Let me go back to the PowerPoint and I will now sum up. 
We're giving you a whole load of power here, so I'm saying use it wisely. Um, in the context of what we're talking about here, you're building a base map. As I said at the beginning, it's there to support your subject matter. Now, you may be building your subject matter as well, so that, you know, if you're doing the whole map, then it's whatever works. But in the context of a base map, then um, try and keep it a little bit under control. Um, there's a lady called Kate LaRue who works for the city of Seattle, who when we first released all of this last year, decided to have a bit of fun. And she went crazy. She called it Kate's hideous vector layer. Um, the amazing thing about it is that, although I don't think any of us would actually want to use this, and she does know I'm talking about this, by the way, um, although I think uh, none of us would actually want to use this, it does actually work as a map. I'll give her that. She did a good job with it from that context. And just to really uh, redeem her, I want to go across to this, and this year she's released this map of Seattle as a vector tile package, vector tile uh, base map. And this has been built by her from scratch using City of Seattle data. So this is the sort of uh, level that I hope that you're all going to feel sort of fired up to do. I think she's done a pretty good job with this. And with that, I think we're done. So um, let me go back and pick up. Uh, I'll come back to that links page, I think. Yeah, just I'll put the links page up in a minute. Uh, as ever, please take the survey. It does sort of mean quite a bit to us. It tells us how we're doing. It gives us a chance to hopefully improve next year. And now I'll leave that on screen if you want to take a picture or do anything with it. And we will take questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the question was problems with downloading the layer, the style from the layer. Uh, let me go back into my, um, let me just sort of quickly go through this routine again. Uh, and tell me if this, if this is what you did. So I made a copy of the layer. Uh, that's the layer I've already copied, but we'll make a copy of it. Um, I then saved the layer, gave, I'll just leave that as it is for now, and created the item, which dropped it, let me renew my... Because if you click on it right now, it doesn't give you that option, does it? If I click oh, on... In the table of contents? Um, if I click on that now, I do have that... I. I'm logged into my account. That's an important thing that does it. So now I've got that download style button. You can't download the style of the original You should be able to. Um, uh, whoops, I mean. So download the style. There's not a style. Uh, let me go back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, could, I'm, they were doing lots of updates too, so it could have been you could have caught it at a funny time. But if you yeah. have any specific questions, um, you can go down to the the island downstairs and just give them that workflow and see if they they have identified something. 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the question is, does it support river type labeling? Do you want uh, to take that word? Sure. It doesn't necessarily respect everything you've done with it in Matplex because it is getting, it's a different label engine. Um, however, it, does, it doesn't keep them horizontal. It does move them along the river and it does a pretty good job with it. Um, just it doesn't handle it the exact same way. Yeah, good. Yeah. And so often the tutuking is as simple as you just increase the um, spacing, letter spacing, and it's just yeah. subtle little things. Controlling the number of names along the feature is the worst aspect of it. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it seems to be, you seem to be getting uh, a label every couple of inches or so, and you've really got to sort of mess around in there to try and get, uh, is it symbol spacing, is it, that adds that? I think so. Yeah. There are various things you can find that will actually add that extra spacing in there, but it's a bit trial and error. Mm -hmm. sure. um, I don't know the specifics of that. I know that um, the, with those mobile vector tile packages, there are clip versions already, but I don't know the specifics to that. Um, you'd have to go downstairs to the one of the islands and ask the collector guys. Uh, Uh, my understanding is you can. Um, I, again, I don't know the details of Collector very well. Yeah, these, these questions were about uh, loading, it, loading the maps into Collector and cutting the data. Yeah, I know it supports it. I'm just not sure all the technicalities of it. So just yeah, go downstairs, ask those guys. Cool. Okay. Okay, well, thank you, folks. Thank you.